In this video, I'm going to build and fly this RCPCB ornithopter. My previous attempt using a single servo for flapping wasn't very successful. You can check it out in my other video. So this time I will try a dual servo approach. I purchased these servos from AliExpress and then created a rough CAD design to see how everything would fit together. I also used this design as a reference during the assembly and build. For the body, I initially used carbon rods, but the necessary wiring created a huge mess. Then I had the idea to use a PCB for the bird body and it's just one gram heavier. PCB Way supplied multiple packages to ensure the project's success. I received 3D printed parts and the PCB ornithopter body to organize electronics neatly. I designed the PCB bird body using Altium Designer. Then I uploaded the project files to PCB Way and asked for a quote. But I didn't stop there. They offer a wide variety of manufacturing services, so I tried their 3D printing service as well. Also, CNC milling is something I will definitely try in the future. Find out more on PCBWay.com. I will put the link in the video description. Regarding the electronics, I'm using an ESP32 module, which is not really a ready-to-use solution. A PCB to mount this microcontroller is essential. I want to give credit to an ornithopterist who inspired my work. I modified his Arduino code to run on the ESP32 FreeRTOS. The last thing I want to mention before the build is this 3-wire FlySky radio receiver. This PPM receiver also sends telemetry data to the radio controller, allowing us to monitor the battery voltage directly. I begin by soldering the ESP32 onto the PCB. I apply the generous blob of solder to spread across the pins. Then I added the 3.3 volts regulator. Occasionally I cleaned up the mess I created and checked for short circuits. After that I added the pins for the step-down converter and then installed the step-down circuit itself. Here I am adding an LED along with the resistor to provide feedback on the circuit's status. I crimped the wires of the power connector to straight pins. These pins are then soldered to the PCB to ensure the wires last longer. I used heat shrink tubing for insulation. Then I added and soldered the programming pins. The time has come to test the PCB for the first time. After that I added the pins for the radio receiver. Then the boot pins. And finally both servo pins were placed and soldered into position. With the PCB completed, I needed to set the output voltage of the step-down converter to 6.4 volts. Then I connected the ESP32 to my computer using a USB serial programmer. To give functionality to the ESP32, I flashed it with my flapping software. The code is on my GitHub, feel free to check it out. Creating the wings part required cutting a substantial number of carbon rods to the appropriate size. I experimented with different materials including carbon parts cut from sheets. Here on the left is a glass reinforced nylon from PCB Way. In the middle we have regular PLE prints and on the right hand side the carbon plates. Here I'm comparing the parts by weight. Obviously the carbon is the stiffest and the lightest but in my application the 3D printed parts are just fine. I will use this strong fishing line to tie the carbon rods to the wing joint plates. But first I need to pull the fishing line through the needle using this small wire tool. Here comes the lengthy process of tying the parts together. This is probably the most boring part of the wing build but it needs to be done. I had to repeat this step multiple times for all the connections. I am securing the fishing line with CE glue. But I am not soaking everything because these connections need to be aligned later. I will use these carbon parts for the outer wing joints. Because I broke some servo horns, I reinforced them using PLA. Actually, this is a socket for the original servo horn that snaps into it. It also has a groove to guide the main wing spar straight. Before attaching the wing spars to the bird body, the servo motors need to be in their place. To secure them, I'm using zip ties. This method is very useful because I needed to replace servos multiple times. Finally, here is the laid out wing skeleton before adding the wing foil. Actually, before wrapping the wing, the tail assembly needs to be done. For this, I also used carbon plates and a 3D printed spacer. The process is very similar to the wing build, so I won't go into details about it. I drew guidelines with a marker where I intended to cut the wing foil. Then, using a sharp utility knife, I cut the wing foil, which, by the way, is just a trash bag. 
Next, I've wrapped the wing foil around the main wing spar and repeated these steps for all the wing segments. The last segment of the wing is curved. I achieved this by keeping the last carbon rod under tension with fishing line. To wrap the curved segment, I had to create relief cuts approximately as wide as the glue tape I'm using. Here's the wing before trimming and after trimming the excess material. Before the real fly test, I made sure that the bird glides well. To achieve this, I had to set the tail at a slight positive angle. This is one of the earliest flight footages with very low flapping frequency. With a higher frequency, the bird is more agile. At this point, I realized that I made a grave mistake. I tried to come in for a landing. This is the aftermath of the incident, so I had to rebuild some parts. After a couple of days, we are back on track. Here's proof that some dogs are just naturally curious. My friend gave his sweat and tears to catch up with the bird. We really tried to capture some nice FPV drone footage, but none of us is a great drone pilot. I will leave it here anyway. If you would like to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing and thank you for watching. <laughs>